live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods, moving, and storage studios, this is The Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life and your money. I'm Ramsey personality George Camel, joined this hour by best-selling author and host of The Ken Coleman Show. You guessed it, America. It's Ken Coleman himself. And we are excited to take your calls at 888 825 Five two two five. If you want to talk about getting out of debt, getting on a budget, building wealth, paying off the house, switching jobs, getting a side hustle, we can talk about all that stuff, Ken. Yeah, can absolutely. You know, Dave has said for decades that your income is your greatest wealth building tool. And uh, I'm the personality that specializes in making more money, but also experiencing more meaning. So increase the income, increase your impact. It is possible now more than ever. Uh, Love just the alliteration sharing. there. You Gosh, will, you're good at that. Yeah, well, you know, I'm a preacher's kid, so I speak in alliteration. I can't help myself. It's memorable. It is. So there you go. Let's do it. All Let's right. Do it. AJ's kicking us off in San Diego. AJ, welcome to the show. Hey, George. Hey, Ken. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. How can we help? So um, I've got a career question. Um, I, I want to know how to plan for the future here. I'm very, very fortunate uh, financially, um, but my concern is around the uh, culture in my, in my company. I work for a small uh, investment brokerage. Not many people um, run heavily from the top down. And uh, if it was just a, on a financial basis, I would stay here forever. Um, I like what I do. I like building relationships and sales. Um, but like I say, it's just kind of the culture that, uh, you know, has me concerned from a principal standpoint. What specifically or what are you comfortable sharing as it relates to this culture stuff that's wanting you to driving you crazy, making you want to leave? Uh, it's coming from the top down. And so in this in this role, it's, uh, you know, a com- commission based job with <clears throat> preset, you know, um, percentages or, or commissions, if you will. And um, I think because we're a small group and, and just the dynamic of it, uh, my managing broker uh, will, you know, dip his hand into the pot. And Okay. Um, I want you to be more specific. So, AJ, you're saying you don't agree with the comp structure and you feel like your boss is stealing from you? Yeah. The comp structure is very clear, but the comp structure is not followed. Um, I can give you an example. That's what I'm looking for. A recent for. deal. Give me an example. Perfect. So this will happen one every four or five deals. Um, where uh, So we did a deal just recently that closed that, um, you know, the total commission on the deal was 70000 uh, give or take. My comp on the deal, um, based on our contract, is 35000 I end up with twenty. So you're supposed to get 50% of any commission. Right. Yeah, but what was the reason given? Was there any reason given for why you took a fifteen thousand dollar hit on a on a commission that is laid out clearly in your employment agreement? Yeah, the reason is the same as it always is. I'm I'm good to you. I give you opportunity, and um, you know, so I, I'm I'm just not changing it. Okay, so what's your question? Because I'm ready to rip this leader of yours, this, this this disaster, this this bad boss. This this is this is manipulation. It's it's horrible. Oh, I couldn't hold it in, George. What was your question? Yeah, I I know what it is from a psychological standpoint. Um, the reason I'm still holding on is because at the end of the day, I still do really well here, and you know, I wonder, am I going to? I feel like I'm winning a lottery ticket as far as income, and am I going to get that somewhere else? Okay, so what do you sell? Real estate. Okay, bro. Um, first of all, if you're good at selling real estate, you can sell real estate for anybody, anywhere, anytime. But this is eating away at you. And it should. It is, for sure. I know. And listen, it's not going to get better. I'm going to call you out on something because I'm your friend. I think you're scared. Mm-hmm. I think you're scared to leave. Because I think you don't, you don't believe you can do what you're doing anywhere else. I think that's pretty apparent. And so I think you got some fear, maybe some doubt. And I think that's what's keeping you there. But let me tell you something. You either overcome this fear and doubt and leave, or you're going to become so resentful, so bitter, and something bad is going to happen. As opposed to you taking control of your life and not be treated this way. That's a great point. I know. 
<laughs> so, AJ, I only see um, two options here. Either you leave or you deal with it and go, hey, I'm going to set up a meeting with another leader, bring them into it, and say, here's what's going on. I need a solution for this. Can you do that? Is there another leader that you can involve? No. no. It's, it's such a small team. There's there's six of us, and I'm you know, third on is, the So is ball. that person basically the CEO? Are they running the company? Yeah. Yeah, it's manipulation. It's over. The Today was the day we decided. Now, we're going to go find another broker – or another firm or whatever, and you're going to relationship yourself into this. Okay? Mm-hmm. Your head's going to be high, shoulders back, and you're going to be bold because you know you can sell. So go. Right. Go where you're treated properly. You have not hit the lottery at all. In fact, the next job where you actually get paid your full commission, that might feel like you hit the lottery, but right now you're, you're being manipulated it's true. I mean, the, you know, the one caveat being is no a lot of business comes in and he, he, he does, you know, hand it out, right? It doesn't so matter. It doesn't that. matter. You feel like a victim mm-hmm. right now. You're like a dog that's been hit its whole life. And every right. time every time he hits you, every time you hit that dog, it's like the dog going, well, he does feed me consistently. Brings a lot <laughs> yeah. of food home. Who cares, right. man? Every time that he takes from your commission that is rightfully yours based on the agreement that he made or she made with you, it is absolutely manipulating you and it is destructive. And you have bought the narrative. You've bought the lie. Because you don't think you can go to us. This, listen, this is done. This is done. There's no more caveats. Mm-hmm. And so from a career perspective, um, I don't, you know, I almost feel like I, I, I like the business. I want to. I want to go off someday and, and do it myself. I want to be, you know, the managing broker of my own Great. business. So do I? Do I stick out until I feel ready to do that? I feel like early no, to, no, to start you'll that. never no. be ready, my man. No. You just got to start. Would you? Would you, would you tell someone to stay in a place where they're just being abused? No, no, no not. don't stay. Stay in the business, but go work for somebody else. And then when we make this next move, here's what I want you focusing on. What do I need to learn that I don't know now that will set me up and put me in a place to where I could work for myself? And we're going to go get that experience, go get that knowledge. Do you understand? Yeah, that's awesome. That's what I've been thinking about. Do it. Stop thinking. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, guys. All right. You got it, man. And man, that lack of integrity, we're not moving past that. It's time it's to go. It's not going to change. This guy is who he says he is. 100%. And, and bold about it. Hey. I bring I a lot to you. you. I take care of you. I'm going to not give you your full commission this time. Yikes. Oh, by the way, kiss the ring. What are we doing? No thanks, Tom Hanks. That's what I got to say to that, Ken. Hey, it's a spicy Friday. Give us a call. 888 5225 This is The Ramsey Show. I say it all the time. If you're a business owner and you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. And when markets are shifting, it's even more important. You've got to know where you stand so you make your next move the right move. And you don't have to be in the dark here. Over 31,000 businesses, including my team at Ramsey, know their numbers because they use NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. NetSuite gives you visibility and control of your financials, planning, budgeting, and inventory so you can manage risk, get reliable forecasts, and improve margins. Having everything in one place has saved my team hours each week since we made the switch to NetSuite. NetSuite is a game changer. So head on over to netsuite.com slash Ramsey to get a product tour today. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey.
Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, joined this hour by Ken Coleman. We are taking your calls about life, money, career, the pursuit of happiness, impact, and income. It's all here on The Ramsey Show. 888-825-5225. Patty joins us up next in Austin, Texas. Patty, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for taking my call. Absolutely. What's going on? So, um, so we have a decision to make as a family. Uh, we are currently staying in Austin. We bought a home. Uh, we closed the home last year in uh, November. So we have been staying in this house for since March of this year. Uh, my wife got a new job offer in California, and we were wondering if moving to California, does it make sense based on the salary hike that she is getting? And if yes, then what do we need to do with this house? We don't want to sell it, so does renting this house make sense? Mm. Okay, so excitement level on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being no excitement, 10 being throwing a party. How excited is your wife, and then how excited are you about the potential of moving to California for this job? I think we, my wife is pretty excited, not because it's California, just because of the role uh, okay. that she's getting. She likes the company and everything, and I think it's it's going to be a good, good prospect for her. Going forward, so okay. in that sense, um, um, right. she's pretty excited, and I'm also very supportive of her because I can, in my job, I can work from anywhere. Yeah. Uh, so just financially, does it make sense? That's the question. Well, so on the financial piece, break it down for George and I. So, uh, what's the what's the cost of living increase uh, from her standpoint? Is she getting a nice bump in salary? Right. So I'll, I'll walk you through our current situation and then right. the situation in California. So all all in gross uh, income. So right now, I make one forty, uh, one hundred and forty thousand. She makes one hundred and twenty five thousand base. Plus each of us uh, in total would make uh, are making close to twenty nine thousand in bonuses um, each year. So total income you can say two hundred and ninety four thousand mm-hmm. right now in Texas. Um, when we move to California, I'm assuming my salary is going to stay same. That's the worst case scenario, right? So I'll be making same 140 uh, base, but she is getting 195,000 okay. uh, in California. Plus, uh, bonus structure will remain same, but because uh, her base is increasing, so the bonus would be around 33,500. Uh, so total would be 368,000. Uh, dollars plus she's also getting stocks and yearly that uh, the stock listing is close to hundred thousand dollars so we're talking about a 70k bump in income and so then it comes down to the math of we know the taxes are going to be higher the cost of living is going to be higher in california does that equate to under seventy thousand to where it's still a net win for you guys uh, so even when i put so in this assumption i'm thinking that our current home would go on rent. So even in that terms, if I make that assumption, I would we would be saving close to ten thousand four hundred dollars more compared to what we do here yearly okay. in California. How much do you owe on the home in Austin? Uh close to three hundred and forty. What's 000. it what's it worth if you sold it today? So I checked Red Spain it says five twenty five. Okay, and then what price point have you done your homework on homes and what they cost in the area where you guys are going to be living? I don't think I'm going to buy a property in California so soon. Uh, so we would be renting uh, at least for the next couple of years in California for sure. Yeah. If I'm in your shoes, I'm selling your property in Austin. I'm with George. For a few reasons. Number one, being a long distance landlord is a recipe for disaster. Yeah. And number two, you guys aren't in a financial position. Obviously, the income is great, but you're going to be paying rent on top of hoping that you have a responsible tenant who pays on time that can pay the mortgage, right? That's always – I put that in air quotes. You can't see unless you're watching. But that's the part that worries me. And so I would get – I know it's – it's there may be a stupid tax involved here because you guys just moved in recently. And so after realtor fees, and it may not have appreciated that much, uh, you're going to have to pay capital gains on the profits as well because you've only been there for a few months, correct? Yeah. So, I mean, she still – after joining the job, so she still has six months to eight months to move to California. So I think we can stay one year in this property and make it a long-term capital gain instead of okay. short-term. 
That's better, at yeah. least. Yeah. So I'm still selling it. I th- you yes. guys will, will leave with, uh, what, 160 and change in equity? Right. That can help kickstart your journey in California. And if you're in California long term, you're going to want to buy something, even though it's insane. And that might mean you save up $600,000 with your amazing income and buy a $900,000 property years from now. Okay. And another thing that I was thinking, what if we pay off this property? Does it make sense to hold on this property and rent it out or still paying off doesn't make sense? And still, You're still a long-distance uh, landlord. The question is, when you're in California, would you go buy a house in Austin to rent out? Right, yeah. The answer is right. probably no. No. And yeah. so I think the time to be a real estate investor is once we can pay cash for another property and our current home is paid off. And you guys can do – I mean, with this income, it won't take long for you guys to do that if you keep living on less than you make. and be, You're clearly very intentional. You're a super smart guy. And so I think you can get there. But right now, that wouldn't be my go-to. I have a, a follow-up question, Patty. Is this a, uh, a hybrid model? Will, even if you were to move to California, will she be required to be in the office every day? Do you know that? Because I know she's working remote for a season in Austin. Yeah, she has to be in office. It's a manufacturing company. Gotcha. So the way All right. It, it, it okay. And there. you've looked at rent in that area that's close by to her work? Yeah. It's, as a worst come worst, it would be like if we go for a single family home, it would be around $4,000, $4,200. Okay. Uh, but we can move into apartment. I mean, we have been staying in apartment from past 20, yeah, sure. 15 years. As so long that, as that rent is about 25% of your take-home pay, that leaves you with plenty of margin to live the rest of your life, invest 15% of your income into retirement, pay off the house early. Do you guys have kids? No. No kids. Yes. Okay. Did cool. she get recruited on this or did she go seek this position? Um, I, she got recruited. She So she... Yeah, she has a pretty good experience in launching all electric vehicles. She used to work for Tesla before. Okay, this, so let me ask that. you this. This is this this yeah. is a very quick point, but I got to know if if a company in Texas had had called and offered the same position, um, and and so you have now one in in Texas and one in California. Which one would you, which is let's say it was the same thing. Which one would you all take? Texas. Yeah, I got to tell you, um, when someone recruits you, it feels really good. It does. It feels good to be wanted. Um, right. But I, I just wonder if long term financially, if you guys, if she, if she doesn't go, all right, what if I look for something in a different state that's not as expensive? What if I look for something in the Texas area and I can further my career in Texas? You don't have to take every good offer because I'm just – I just want to throw it out there. I'm not in any way trying to talk you out of going to California at all. I'm not anti-California. But I'm being very realistic on the financial implications of moving to California to, to, to do something that she can do in another state. So if it were me, I, I would be sitting down going, okay, if we want to move up, can we move up in other places? Do we have to take this opportunity, which is a good opportunity? I don't know that this is a great opportunity. You you may think it is. And if you think it is, then do it. But I, I at least wanted to put that out there. Are they paying any relocation costs or paying for any oh, visits? Yeah, they're covering everything. They're covering everything and plus giving us $10,000 more for miscellaneous stuff. So oh, yeah, that's good. I'd, I'd go visit back. for sure and check out the area, figure out what the different neighborhoods are, where you want to rent. And that'll make you feel a little more peace about the move in case you do it. Yeah, but I think to Ken's yeah. point, it doesn't have to happen. And so think about the future and what you guys want to do long term as well. I just have so many friends that are moving here uh, in our state where we have no state income tax. And the amount of money they are making by simply moving out of a high tax state, it's it's realistic. Even you taking a pay cut sometimes. Or to your it. point, George, how much money and how long it takes to save up a money to just buy a house, save up money to buy a house in a state like that where real estate is so high. It's, it's, yeah. you got to think about the big picture. Well, they have a great shovel, at least, and that helps with this whole yeah, situation. absolutely. Way to go. This is The Ramsey Show. I love real estate and I want you to have a house, but I don't want a house to have you. 
That's why you need to get in touch with Churchill Mortgage to make sure you do this right. These guys are awesome. They'll help you get on a smarter mortgage plan because they're committed to doing what's right for you. That means they check in every year with free consultations to help you stay on the right plan. They show you how to save money and interest so you can build wealth faster. They walk you through the total cost of your loan so you can make the best choice. Basically, they care. That's why we call them Ramsey Trusted. You can achieve debt-free home ownership, and Churchill is here to help. Go to their site, churchillmortgage.com slash Ramsey, to start your approval or get more information. like right now is the time of year when it's make or break when it comes to our goals. We had a reset when school started again and now we're heading into a holiday season and let's be real, it's hard to stay motivated once that spending frenzy starts. We've all got goals, whether it's to find a better job, make more money, pay off some debt, build stronger relationships, and it can be hard to keep that momentum going. But here's the good news. Coming up in a couple of weeks, we have one of our biggest events, Smart Conference. We're coming to Dallas, Texas for a day-long jam-packed event where you'll get advice from leading experts on money, personal growth, career, mental health, and your marriage. You're going to leave with all the knowledge and motivation you need to reach your goals and live the life that you want. So join me and the rest of the gang. All the Ramsey personalities will be there. They'll be there. Dave Ramsey, Dr. John Deloney, Ken Coleman, Christina Ellis, uh, Rachel Cruz. It's going to be a good time. It's and a special event. And by the way, it's more than just speaking. We've got some fun things planned. Very entertaining. Almost um, too much entertainment. Yeah, I'm like, like uh, we're going to charge more. You and Rachel are doing a little, uh, uh, is it like a version of your new podcast? We're, we're doing a live interactive uh, podcast. Does that mean that you'll have the beverages, the adult beverage on we the stage? Might, it might be a mocktail. We don't know yet. You know, it's early in the day, Ken. We can't go too I have hard. a recommendation for you or Rachel. What's that? Um, my wife recently had a had a, a, a nice beverage with some elderberry in it. Oh, yes, like a vodka base. Good for and, the immune system. Yeah, a little elderberry dropped right in there, and boy, she thought it was really refreshing. I, I, know, I know you're not I taking suggestions, it. but I thought I'd give you a suggestion. That's a good uh, okay. wintertime drink, Ken. Thank there you for is. that. So uh, October 22nd, we're all going to be there. It's a day long, and it's like drinking from the fire hose, Ken. I mean, it is. You're going to leave exhausted, but also so motivated. It's a lot of energy. Whenever you put 6,000 people in a room that are there for at least a common goal of getting better, uh, and there's just a lot of juice in the room, you know? And it's a great event to bring friends, family who may not, you know, they may not be in with the Ramsey gang, yep. and they can get a taste of what we're all about. Well, we got and a theme going here. The Elderberry juice, juice taste. This is good. I mean, this is. Uh, Gosh, Ken, you're, wow. you're too good. I know, it's happening. So go to ramseysolutions.com slash events, get your tickets today, join us. Uh, you don't have much time, and it's going to be a great time. I yep. guarantee that. We'd love to see you there. Dallas, we're coming near you soon. We're coming to you soon, not near you. Actually, That's right. coming to you soon. We'll be in the heart of Dallas. Yeah, there you go. All, All right. right. Yeah. Back to the phones we go. 888 825 Ethan joins us up next in Madison, Wisconsin. Ethan, welcome to the show. Hi, right, thanks. How's it going? Doing great. How are you? What's going on? Good. Uh, so I graduated in May of 2021 last year, and uh, over that course of time, I paid off $20,000 in student loans. I just took the first job I could get out of school and hustled and grinded and did that. And then I come to find out the student loan forgiveness thing is happening, and I found that I'm eligible to apply to like get my money back, so to speak. I'd have to go back into debt with my loan provider and then have my debt forgiven that way. Um, how should I go about that? Should I do that, go back into debt in order to be forgiven? Uh, is that wise? Okay. All right. I got to jump in, George. Sure. Quick. Uh, because I read entirely too much news every day. There are now multiple lawsuits that have been filed by multiple states against President Biden's executive action. This is not it's not me making this up. This is happening. The reason is, is because you have a lot of privately held student loans. And so when he made that executive action to say, we're going to pay off, we're going to forgive 10,000, it's affecting, and again, I'm not, I'm not defending it. I'm just saying, 
it's real money that's 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 hurting private companies that hold loans and people sign up for and then the states are motivated to protect those companies because those companies are tax paying companies in their states so i don't know if you're paying attention to the news ethan but that has happened and so you have two things going on so the lawsuits have been filed so the ten thousand dollar forgiveness is not happening until those lawsuits are all dealt with number one number two they're there's they're they're not actively moving towards those refunds right now anyway so I, I just want to put that out there, George, because people feel like this is a done deal. I'm going to go ahead and move forward with this. And then it's, it's the basis of his question. So I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. And for those listening that aren't clear on how this is working, because Ethan's gone, well, they're going to put me back into debt, but it's forgiveness. So what we've been seeing is the student loan companies are saying, all right, we're going to drop 10 grand back into your bank account, but we are also reinstating your debt balance to $10,000. And now the hope is down the line at some point, the government comes and wipes that 10,000 balance. It makes my head hurt. Only the government can come up with something that stupid. It's pretty convoluted, but that's how it's working, right? Ethan, am I right on that? Uh, Yeah. That's what you described. Sounds right to me. So no, don't do it. So here's what, here's what some people are doing. I, I'm not going to advocate for or against this, but what they're doing is saying, hey, I'm going to take that $10,000 in the bank and make sure not to spend it, which that takes hey. a level of discipline alone for people who had already gone into debt uh, thinking that this was a good idea. And then they're saying, oh, I'm going to hang on to the 10000 in case they don't forgive it and I'll still have the money to pay it off, Ken. Oh, sure. That sounds wonderful. So, Ethan, that's kind of what you're uh. describing as a – if you go through with this, that's what the hope is. Is that you hang on to the ten thousand, and once it's forgiven, you go, all right, cool. This money is free and clear now. Gotcha, gotcha. So there's okay. risk involved, is what we're saying, and right. unnecessary risk. So don't do it. Pay your student loans off. The government is not going to do it for you. And you're completely debt free now. Yeah, that's correct. Oh, so I'm, I'm debt free now. Oh, great, but, great, great. So, yeah, but he's saying I, I can get the refund. Oh, get I see. Forgiveness. Yeah. Yeah. What baby step are you on now? Um. I was in four, five, and six, but I just replaced the transmission in my car, so I'm back on three. Restocking that emergency fund. Good man. Nice. Yep. Well, you know what's clear to me is that the secret sauce to winning with money is Ethan, and not a third party, not a government, not a forgiveness program. And so I'm sticking with the Ethan program for now. And if you so choose to do it, I'm not mad at you. I'm happy for you for it to you know, propel your financial journey, but there's a lot of risk and a lot of unknowns right now. Yeah. Certainly just wait. Wait until the dust settles in the form of all these lawsuits. Yeah, appreciate the call. It's a uh, good just, conversation. Uh, where's, my little, where's my little thing of tongue? We're just riling up Ken again. He's getting when heartburn. I, when I hear about the government and this, this thing, it gets me right here. We got the tropical thumbs out back. We'll get them for okay. you, Ken, at right. the break. All right. Blinds.com, question of the day coming up here. Their 100% satisfaction guarantee means even if you mismeasure or you pick the wrong color, they will remake your blinds for free. You get free samples, free shipping, and with the new promos they run every month, you'll save even more. Use the promo code RAMSEY to get the best deal. Today's question comes from Brittany in Illinois. I work full-time at a large church, and I love, she put in all caps, my job, but make $45,000 a year. I'm a single mom, homeowner, and drive a modest car. Even though I don't live extravagantly, I am still living paycheck to paycheck. Almost all my income is going to tithe, my mortgage bills, and income property taxes. I used to make $50 to $100 an hour as a digital marketing copywriter, but stopped doing that when offered my current job in ministry. With income as our biggest wealth-building tool, but also living a Christ-centered life, would you recommend someone quitting a job in ministry to pursue a higher-paying job? My biggest motivation to becoming financially free is so that I can continue working in ministry without the stress of making ends meet. Do I find a higher-paying job for a few years to get to baby step four and then come back to ministry? Uh, that's probably the direction. But I want to go back to some things that, you know, you can desire to be in ministry, but if you cannot, and ministry is just like any other job, in that there's a pay range, a scale, right, for the type of job you do in ministry, just like in industry. And even though you desire to work in ministry, if you cannot, if you're not qualified and you are unable to make the amount of money that you need to make, then what we need to do is go, okay, what does ministry look like in another form? In, in, in other words, you can volunteer, you can work part-time in ministry, but we've got to be able to sustain ourselves and accomplish the financial goals. And I think 
if you can make fifty to hundred dollars an hour as a digital marketing copywriter, but you stopped, I'd get back into that field to get the highest paying day job possible. Now, for the whole purpose of getting to baby step four, right, and getting your financial life stable to where you can then go, all right, I could take a bit of a pay cut. But why not maybe go back to a full-time day job, do some volunteer or part-time ministry work. It's still valuable. It is still uh, feeding that passion you have to minister to others, but it doesn't have to be a full-time job. That's okay too. Yeah, if you love your job, but your finances are so tight that you're so stressed, then uh, you're not gonna have a great life. And there's more to it than that. So I want you to go back to that marketing role. Maybe it's uh, in a consulting part-time position, but it sounds like, man, you can propel your financial journey by jumping back into that full-time right now. So it's a good call, Ken. Thanks for the question. This is The Ramsey Show. Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, host of the Fine Print and Entree Leadership Podcast. Joined this hour by the host of the Ken Coleman Show, Ken Coleman. You can find all of those shows on the Ramsey Network or wherever you listen to podcasts. It's a free call this hour, 888 5225 You jump in, we'll talk about your life, your money, and your career. David joins us up next in Virginia. David, welcome to the show. Thank you. How's it going? Good, man. How about you? Good, good. How can we help today? Yeah, mine's more of a just a choice question because I'm not sure, but under the old background, uh, my wife and I are both around 60. Uh, health is so-so. That's one of our concerns is always health care, of course. Um, we own a small business franchise. Uh, at this point in our lives, we're debating whether to sell the franchise and go into another franchise that maybe isn't so labor intensive or just go back to corporate or we can get some decent health care mm. and ride it out that way so we can just take care of ourselves. Mm. Tell us a little bit about the business itself. What kind of what kind of business is it, and what kind of money is it throwing off? Uh, commercial cleaning. Um, been doing it fifteen years. Um, revenues are about one seven. Um, so it's stable. Been around you, for a while. What are you paying yourself off the one seven? Um, I'm thinking sixty. My wife's taking forty. Wow. Where's the rest going? Um, most of it's being tucked away because we're debt free. Um, we have a house to pay for, kid that's grown and gone, no college oh, debt there. Fantastic. You don't have a lot of overhead. Um, no. Is I'm, it just the I'm two going. of you just the two of you doing the cleaning? Uh no, no, no. We have a staff of about thirty. Oh, okay. Well that's where a lot of that revenue is going too, is payroll. So when you oh, say yeah, labor yeah, intensive, totally. you don't mean manual labor on your end. You're just saying no. the headache that it brings. Yeah, my my bot I, I couldn't do it if I wanted to do it at my age. But um How much know, have yeah, you got more. saved for retirement? Currently in our portfolio, about 1.2. And what could you get for the business if you sold it? Uh, we're getting it valuated right now, but we're guessing six. Oh. 600,000 probably. 600,000? 600,000? Uh-huh. On uh-huh. 1.7 in gross revenue? Uh-huh. That doesn't make sense. I, it doesn't make sense to me. I've never heard it that way. You but do I, mean 1.7 million in gross revenue per year? Correct. Correct. And knowing that goes to payroll. Hmm. That just seems awfully low. I thought you were saying six million, which sounded a, yeah. l- a lot closer. That would have been easier. Where did you come up with that number? Based on other franchises that are similar that have been sold. Oh, okay. Well, I got to tell you, I'd sell it. I'd get out of that business. There's just really no long-term benefit for it. The fact that you're in your 60s, you got health issues. Uh, the good news is, is you've got great, you know, pretty good retirement set up, and you can continue to do so. But yeah, I, I would cash out. Uh, but I would not at this age go into another franchise. That's just me. Um, I'm going to go low risk, no risk is what we're saying. I'm going to go no risk. And uh, you guys have a lot to offer. I feel like your heart has left this business. And so I think it's time for your body to do the same. So I would cash out. 
and that will set you guys up nicely with your nest egg. And if you want to go corporate to get some health care, that's not a bad idea, but I'll, I don't want you to do it just for the health care. You do, do you guys have no, long-term care in place? We don't right now, no. And, and for me, it's more of, you know, I still want to work, of course. I still want to bring some income in because we're not ready to fully retire yet. Right. But at the same time, I, I, I want to punch a clock and call it a day and spend time with my wife and go visit my daughter. Then do that. That's honorable. Do it. Because we were, you know, the, the decisions between being self-employed as we are and continuing that route and having all those headaches that come with it or just working with somebody has been something my wife and I have toyed with a lot. Yeah, I just feel like we're hearing a guy who doesn't want any more headaches. You just want to work for somebody, go do a good, do a good job and leave work at work and go live your life. You just said as much. Yeah, I think you're right. Well, I mean, you're the one that's saying it. It's not my opinion. This is what I heard. And I, th- I think in some yeah. way you're, you're, you're calling us uh, for permission, and I'm trying to grant you permission to do what it is we hear you say that you want to do. It's just so hard to look at it and say, you know, you've been working for yourself, basically, and there's a lot of perks that come with that um, as opposed to, you know, reporting to someone. That's but right. So, I also want to make sure we're set up to be able to retire uh, one day and you know, just actually do that at a decent age. Well, I think you are. George, wouldn't you agree? You're the yeah. money guy. I think he's set up now. You're only going to add to it if you sell the company. But let me let me just put it to you this way. Working for yourself in this current company, do the perks outweigh the headaches, yes or no? Financially. That's the only side of it right now. Well, the rest of it now. So I'm going to ask it again. You just gave me a caveat. Do the perks, <laughs> all of them, do the perks outweigh the headaches? No. No! You tried to be a politician on me on a Sunday morning show. The difference between oh, me and hey, those Sunday yeah. morning hosts is I'm going to hold you Ken's to it. Ken's not fooling around. Not messing around. Mid- midterms are coming up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> David, listen, you've done a good job, man. I, 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 I think what you want to do is the right thing to do, don't you, George? Yeah, I think you – to give you guys some peace and clarity, I would connect with a SmartVestor Pro yes. and run the numbers. Because right now you're kind of hoping and wishing, not really sure what the number is that you guys could actually retire with. And I'm over here crunching some numbers for you. If you took that 600 grand and you just plopped it in an, a taxable brokerage account, within seven, six, seven years, that'll be over a million on top of your 1.2. And so you guys have to look at your lifestyle and how much income would we need to withdraw from our nest egg every year to have a great retirement, do all the things you're talking about. David. And that'll give you some great clarity, but you're in a great spot. How do you feel about what George just threw at you? Um, it definitely puts a spark in it, you know, without a doubt. There we go. George, you and that calculator. Man. I love a good calculator. You so. just inspired <laughs> David. You Who just knew? inspired him. Sometimes it just takes a little math. That's all it is. But once you have that, David, you guys are, you've worked so hard and you've lived on less than you make. You're debt free. You've been doing this stuff and you got to remember what the reason is. Yeah. It's not just to punch true. the clock. And David, the numbers that George gave you, that doesn't even count you working five or six more years. That's if you just put 600 mm-hmm. grand in and never touched it and just put it in some good funds. And you never clean another corporate office the rest of your life. I wanted to throw that in there. How does that feel, David? <laughs> That works for me. Uh, see, We I'm got David in a good you. mood, Ken. Boy, we did. He's chuckling. I love it. I like a good chuckle. I'm here for it. Yeah. All right, let's take another one. Megan joins us in Kansas City. Megan, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. Um, my question is, my husband and I are on, on baby steps for five, six. And my question is, outside of the 529, where could we save for our children's future? Do you feel like it's not enough in the 529? Um, no, I, uh, uh, long story, the 529 sounds like a really great option for kids who want to go to college, and my family is a combination of kids who get their PhD law degree, as well as kids who cannot learn the traditional way, maybe an associate at best, but go more the trade school, certificates, um, continuing seminars, that type of stuff, and I kind of just want both my kids to be set up kind of equally when they turn 18. I know there's a lot of risk involved with that. They're under two. Oh. Two kids under two. I thought you were going to say they're like 16. Okay, we got plenty of time here. You're just worried, hey, what if they don't need the funds for education? Yeah, what if they don't need the funds for education, but I do want to make sure, and I say I, my husband and I, do want to make sure that they are, you know, 
set up to succeed. But even if they don't go to college, they 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 will pursue some sort of education, right? Yeah. Even yeah. if it's in the trades. Uh, yeah, that's that's the goal. And so that money can be used towards any expense when it comes to education. It doesn't have to be a four-year university. It can be towards housing and laptops and all the things required to do that. And you can always change the beneficiary. So if one kid okay, needs so more, the other one doesn't, you can change the names and move that money around. Okay. So you're, you're still just saying stick with the 529 529- even if you want to make sure that they are set up and they just go straight into work. Yes, because if they go straight into work, they don't need $100,000 sitting there because they're going to have earned income with no expense at that point. So there's okay. not really anything to, to save for. I mean, they, you can do custodial IRAs and what's called an UPMA, Uniform Transfer to Minors Act. There's all kinds of things like that, but I wouldn't worry about that at this point. Okay. Yeah, you're doing great, though. At two years old, you're already thinking about this. Most parents, it's just, oh, my gosh, they're 18. I guess we need to, oh, we're we're broke. Take out student loans. We'll co-sign. And so the fact you're thinking about this tells me they're going to be okay. And the future of education is probably only getting more expensive, Ken. So I'd rather at least plan for something and decide later. Thanks for the call. That puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books. My thanks to all the folks in the booth, Jenna, Ben, James, Zach, Andrew, the whole gang, and you, Ken Coleman. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll be back with you before you know it. Do you love a good Dave rant? Want to see the latest Ramsey Show videos going viral? Check out your favorite moments from The Ramsey Show on YouTube. Go watch and subscribe to The Ramsey Show channel on YouTube. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods, moving, and storage studios, this is The Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life and your money. I'm Ramsey personality George Camel, joined by my colleague, Mr. Ken Coleman, this hour, and we are here for you to take your calls, to give you that next step, to uh, maybe help you have a breakthrough in something you're going through, whether that's with your money or your career. So call us at 888 825 Griffin is kicking us off in Charleston, South Carolina. Griffin, welcome to the show. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for having me. My dad and I are huge fans, so really we appreciate, appreciate your time. Thank you. How can Absolutely. we help? I wanted some guidance here on what to tackle in terms of my loans or just to keep stacking money in my savings account. Um, currently have three main loans between my townhome, student loans, as well as my car. Um, and to uh, break down the numbers for you, the townhome was just recently purchased um, for $410,000, put down 10%, and the current loan is for three hundred and sixty-eight five thirty-five. dollars That's on a seven-year arm at 4.75%. I just paid my first mortgage on the 1st of October, and that was $2,365 which I own the property myself. However, I do split that payment with my girlfriend that lives with me. Okay. And then we've got my student, yep, then we've got my student loans. Um, Those, to be perfectly honest with you, I have not paid in a while, Um, but there's uh, six different loans between 3.76% and 4.6%, and the standing balance on that is 26,654. And then there's the car, which is a 3.69% loan um, and that total is $9,455, and I'm paying that every month, obviously, which is a $341 payment. Okay. What's your question? My question is, I've got income of about $175,000 a year, 26, and I've been fortunate enough to be put into this position. Um, do I continue to do the minimum payments on these loans, or should I pay my car off all in one month, which basically in my last commission check that I just earned, I can do that. Um, plus save some, um, I'm trying to under, to try to get some guidance here on what next steps to take, um, to get to the point of financial freedom really as quick as possible. I love it. Well, one way to get to financial freedom as quickly as possible is to stop going into debt. So are we on the same page mm-hmm. that there is no more debt in the picture? No more debt in the picture. I don't have a credit card. Okay, um, great. So. But all the other things are debt. The car loan, the student Correct. loan, 
the townhome. So here's one thing. Correct. You mentioned a lot of interest rates, which tells me you love math. You love Speaking crunching the, the numbers number. and justifying every purchase, right? Yes, sir. So one thing we're going to do, it's really hard for people like you who are sharp, is to ignore the interest rates. Okay. Now, if we ignore the interest rates and we start listing these balances from smallest to largest, that tells me the car loan is gone this month, then we're attacking the student loans. Those are going to be gone in a few more months. Right. And then we're going to build an emergency fund of three to six months of expenses. And then the house, that'll come later. We're not going to worry about that as part of our consumer debt. I should have mentioned I have 56000 in savings. Well, that helps. We're debt-free today, yeah. my man. What are you waiting for? <laughs> I should have mentioned that. And 1000 in my check. So why are you hanging on to the fifty six and not just paying off the debt as it's accruing interest? Because the – well, that's a great question. <laughs> I think uh, a, a large part of it is because I wanted to stay for a townhome. I didn't know how much exactly I needed until I made the purchase, which was just done in the last three or four months. So that money is really residual from the money I was saving up for a down payment. For so you decided time. I'm just going to put 10% and so, down and leave the rest in the bank. The difference between the 10 to 15% and the offer that was provided, it was really not, it wasn't, it didn't make enough sense for, for me to do the additional 5%. So I just put 10 down. That's correct. And, and so this is, you know, what, like I just said, just paid my first mortgage payment. So kind of in one month, one of, uh, owning this property and living in okay. it and trying to decide what to do with my money. Yeah, he's spinning plates, George. He's got There's financial a, plates all over You're doing 17 the place. things at once. Yeah. Number one, it, it does worry me that the girlfriend is paying into this Definitely. and she doesn't own any part of it. And if this doesn't work out, she's going to feel like she got screwed, right? Um, I, there, you know, I can't speak for anybody here, um, but I, what I do know is that I did come to the situation by salary alone would, would pay and then my commission on top, right, would, would would be a, okay. Uh, I would be able to pay these other bills, right? So there, that that is, I am in that position. I'll tell you what I would do, what Dave Ramsey would do if he was sitting here, and that is to be completely mm-hmm. debt free by the end of the day and use the rest of the money as okay. an emergency fund. And we're going to then start mm-hmm. investing fifteen percent of our income into retirement. Any money beyond that is going to get thrown at the mortgage. And I would probably look at refinancing when it makes sense over to a fifteen year fixed okay. rate because those adjustable rate mortgages are the worst. Okay. Very okay. dangerous really type of loan. I appreciate that guidance. So okay. you're in a great yeah. spot. Right. We just have to start doing things with focus intensity one at a time. But the good news is exactly. you can do this all tomorrow if you decide to. Okay. So, uh, you know, in terms of that's exactly what I wanted to hear was I feel like I'm putting a lot of attention towards a few different things rather than focusing and honing in as, uh, you know, a, gaz- a gazelle intensity, as Dave would say, yeah. towards one of these. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, you know this stuff. I'm just curious, how come you haven't done it? It seems like you've been listening for a while. Um, I, I think a lot of it is um, I am financially conservative, and I like seeing the bank account grow. There's that level of uh, pride. But then the other the other half of it is I, I am 26, and I, I am taking uh, these steps a little quicker than than maybe some people would, but you know, there's no excuse for that. I'm, 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 I'm ready to tackle this and, and start making moves tomorrow. So, well, your greatest wealth building tool is your income. You make an amazing income at 26 of 175,000, and I just want to see it work for you instead of it disappear into the yeah. abyss. And you're going, I don't feel like I'm making great progress. Uh, I, I, I'm listening in here. I'm listening intently. Coach Griffin. Ken, jump in. I'm going to. Uh, I, I think you have been tinkering because you like finances. Um, I think you mm-hmm. like strategies, and that's going to make you uh, susceptible and t- to temptations to tinker. And so here's my coach mm-hmm. Ken, my coach Ken phrase: Stop tinkering, and start focusing. Focus on the baby steps, the way George laid them out. You've been listening to the show. Just focus on the baby steps. Stop tinkering around. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just yes, stop. Sir. You're going to get start further. Start, start you're going to get further with focus, right? And, uh, sure. and now, you, you know, you can always be curious and see what options are for you long term, but that's after you get yourself in a financially stable situation. You got it? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Have you read The Total Money Makeover, Griffin? I haven't, but I'm going to. Well, can I send it to you or do you already have a copy? I don't have a copy. But now I, you do. Boom. 
We're going to ship it to you, my man. Hang on the line. Austin will pick up, and we will send you a copy of The Total Money Makeover. That book gets me pumped every time. I still read it once a year just to stay focused and stay motivated. The audio book is great, too. So hang on the line. We'll get that to you. But right now, focus is the operative word here. And you make a great income at a young age, and if you can use it, and channel it like a laser. Dude, you can do some amazing things with your money. Stop tinkering. Start focusing. I was hoping for First a T-word. chalkboard? I was really hoping for a T-word from Ken Coleman. Write it on a chalkboard right there. All right. I'll take it, Ken. All right. Pretty good. Tweet that. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit. Whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com. Here's a friendly reminder that you can visit us here at the Ramsey Solutions headquarters just south of Nashville, Tennessee. We were just out there meeting some nice folks, taking some pictures, signing some books, having a good time. So come visit us. Make it a point on your uh, your trips as you're traveling around the country to come see us. We've got uh, free baked goods and free coffee, and you get a free mug, and we've got a fun timeline wall museum and a full bookstore, and it is a good time. It's fantastic. Nashville's a great city to visit to begin with. Yeah. We, yeah it's You know, years ago when I was uh, hosting the Just the Video channel, um, had some folks come by, and they asked me to sign their baby. That's a true different. story. Uh, so don't please, please don't bring your babies and ask us to sign them. Like Sharpie on skin. Sharpie on the little guy's leg. I feel uncomfortable. I didn't do it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, good. You didn't go through with it. Yeah, I just said they asked me to sign. Well. I redirected. Don't make it weird, people. That's all we got to say. Yeah, there you go. All right. Let's go to the phones. 888-825-5225 is the number to call. Grant joins us in Spokane, Washington. Grant, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I just want to say thanks for accomplishing your mission on a daily basis. Oh, thank oh, you. Oh, that's very nice. Thank you, sir. What's going on? All right. Um, baby step number three is where my wife and I are at. We've been married for 16 years. We have five kids, and legal separation was proposed. Um, she brought it up last night when we were talking. Ooh. We have $4,000 to the penny in our emergency fund right now. And I think we've never established a monthly budget, but I think our net to cover is between 3000 and $3,500 just to survive. So we have essentially a month's worth of savings right now. My question for you is, should I add a second job to go gazelle and tents to bump up our savings? Or is it more important to deal with my mental health and my marriage in this season? Also, one part of this is my mental health. I was diagnosed with bipolar uh, a number of years ago, I think five years ago, and I was just on a manic phase yesterday. Oh, my goodness. Are you seeing someone or have you seen a counselor or a medical professional for this? I, I am being treated by my team. I have a counselor that I see on a weekly basis. I have a psychiatrist that I've seen, I think, five or six times in the last three months, okay. and they're actively managing my meds, and I just had a medication change just today. And we're trying to find the right balance for 
the different mood stabilizers and the different medications. I think yeah. I've been on six or seven different medications in the last four years. I mean, do you and the team feel like there's progress that has been made and that it's at least while we're still testing and trying that there's some progress? I think I think we're testing and trying. I know that uh, in September I was, I was hospitalized twice. Mm. One was voluntary. The other one was involuntary. And it's been... It's been a hard life for my wife, just dealing with my moods. Yeah. And uh, she she's receiving counseling for herself individually over the last year, and she's not willing to go back to the relationship that we used to have just because it was unhealthy, an unhealthy dynamic where she was trying to regulate my moods with behaviors that she would that she you know. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to be crass, but she would try and control me with sex by giving me what I wanted, and it was just, it was unhealthy. Yeah. Well, so to so, answer your question, you yes, need sir. to be focusing on your health and her health. Yes, sir. And um, want to see you get, you know, that emergency fund where it needs to be, but we, we've got bigger issues at play right now. Yeah. I mean, a situation like this, if it's heading towards divorce, it turns marriage into a business transaction. And so the goal at that point is to obviously protect the kids. Uh, that's the A1. And number two is to make this as little of a mess as possible with the finances. And so how sure is this separation? Is this something you guys are going to try to work through or is this is this headed south? We've been legal, or we've been separated since November 10th of last year, so it's 11 months in, and it doesn't seem to make. We haven't seen much forward progress. We've done intensive marriage counseling week in and week out for the last 12 weeks, and it was financially costing us $150 a session. And um, somebody at our church established a bit of a fund for the Higgins family for us to receive 50% of that that counseling to cover. And we were coming out of pocket $75 a week. And it was a financial, it was a pretty good financial ask on our, on our part. But we were, we didn't, I can't, I can't look back and say that we've made progress in the last few months. I can say that time's gone by and we sent the money, but we haven't really made progress. And then you had the conversation last night where she, she brought up, let's, we need to make this legal. Yes, sir. So it doesn't look good, and and no. and so at this point, again, the emergency fund. But but you taking a second job if you've got the health to do so. I don't think that's a. I don't I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. But bringing in more income during this season, you uh, might be a right idea. But I certainly would check with your your uh, your medical team. Uh, on this to see, you know, do they feel like this is, you know, adding more work hours during this transition? Is that healthy for you? I, I, we can't speak to that. It feels like it may not be. Yeah. I mean, you, you guys don't have debt. And if this does head to divorce, then, you know, being married with 16 years, five kids, then it becomes who's getting what and yeah. custody battles and all that stuff. And so I would, I would be looking at getting a lawyer to figure this out if, if it's been 12 months with no progress. Yeah. And so that's the sad oh, reality. But in, in five weeks, it'll be twelve months. So we're not we're not on the twelve month mark yet, but we're sure. almost to the eleven month mark. So it's like it's. But at that point, I w- I might thing, look one, at getting separate checking accounts because the fear is one spouse drains the account and runs, and you don't have any recourse if okay. things continue to go south. It sounds like it's been amicable, which is great. And everyone's, you know, we're still yes, living. Sir. You're living as roommates, essentially, right? For the last almost year. We're 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 not in the same household. Okay. I, I have a, we're, we're physically we're about three miles apart. Where are the kids? With her, all all four, and then the fifth one, our second born has a difficult relationship with her. She's eleven years old, and she's living with her aunt. Okay, I'm just wondering what what's best long term for the kids at this point. What's fair to them? And living in this weird purgatory of our mom and dad together or not, it's not official. They're still trying to work through this. I'm just more worried about the kids than anything at this point. And so I would try okay. to actually have some level of closure to whatever this is. It sounds like we need to just call it if you've been living apart for this long. I don't want to give up on it, though. Well, I'm with you, brother. I I would. So back to the main point of your question. I mean, if you've got to work and if you can do it, 
and and you've got to work to to help pay for the counseling. I'd fight for the marriage. I'd fight for. Uh, I I will tell you this just candidly. Uh, one of my closest friends in the world went through a divorce over a decade ago, and we were recently hanging out, and and it was an amicable divorce. Um, but we were talking about another friend of ours who's going through a divorce right now, and he told me, my friend that's been divorced now over a decade, he said, I would tell him to fight with every ounce in his body, with everything he's got left, fight. Fight to save the marriage because it is so destructive to the kids, to everybody. So I, I'm with you, man. I'd summon every ounce of strength I've got, and, and I would put some of that strength into you doing everything you can to get healthy because a healthy you is the best chance we have of having a healthy marriage. But I'd fight. I think I'm, I hear what you're saying, and I want to fight. And I, one thing that specifically that she said in the last week is that she wants me to – find the program to follow through on the program and not to short circuit the program and yeah just the follow through and the consistency is what i need to show well, then do her it. And then do it show myself then do it okay do it you can decide you can decide right now do it show her if you're gonna fight you want to fight then i'd say all right babe i'm gonna do it and i'm gonna follow through and show you that I want our marriage to work. Hang on the line, Grant. We're going to send you a copy of Dr. John Deloney's book, Own Your Past, Change Your Future, so that we can continue to walk with you through this really tough situation. Thanks for the call. This is The Ramsey Show. is full of firsts. As the first and longest serving Christian health cost sharing ministry, CHM has shared medical expenses for its members since 1981. We believe you should have the freedom to focus on your health while being supported by a community of believers, giving you the opportunity to create many more firsts. back to the Ramsey Show. I'm George Campbell, joined this hour by my friend Ken Coleman. And uh, Ken, you were just uh, on your own show right before this one, the Ken yeah. Coleman Show, helping folks find those careers that they love. And a lot of people don't believe it's possible. They're not sure how to get there. It's all very squishy. And you walk them through a very clear process in those calls. Yeah, we do. And, uh, you know, it's as simple as self-awareness. You know, an aware person is very clear then on who they are, what they want to do, why they want to do it. And then that translates the confidence to step out and go after it. And, and then it gives you ultimately courage to stay on the path. We've got a great tool that we develop based on that methodology. And the methodology is simple. If you use what you do best, talent, to do work that you really love, that's passion, to produce results that you care deeply about, that's a sense of mission. When you use talent, to perform passion, to produce your mission, you're on purpose. And we've got a great assessment. Uh, tens of thousands of people have downloaded. It's called the Get Clear Assessment. I've got a printout right here. This is what you can actually print out. You have the digital version as well. I'm looking at mine right now. But you get a very nice detailed report on what you do best, what work really fires you up, and then what results drive you. In other words, motivate you. It's called the Get Clear Assessment. And it's normally $30. It's a 20-minute assessment, and you get a detailed report plus a, uh, a a very clear purpose statement that's filled in with those top three talents, top three passions, and that primary motivational driver that we call mission. And it's now $10 at RamseySolutions.com. 
Uh, there's no assessment like it. There's there, there's other assessments that measure talent, but nothing that measures what you love and then what motivates you. And so you've got to understand talent is a tool, but it is passion, which is love, and then mission, which is what motivates me. That's the heart. So 20-minute assessment, it's a great gift. Um, it is great for uh, a variety of people, people who feel stuck people who feel like they've got no clue what they want to do, people who have a really good idea and they want to get some clarity and confidence that that is, in fact, the mountain they want to climb. So the Get Clear assessment, it's only $10 in the month of October. Uh, right now at RamseySolutions.com. That's a killer deal. I've taken it myself, and uh, I'm looking at it right now, and it was spot on. It was like you were reading my mail, Ken. See, there it is. It says, you were created to use your talents of imagination, communication, and discernment to perform your passions of promoting, leading, and creating to accomplish your mission of creation by producing new things and ideas. I couldn't have said it better myself. So that becomes a high-level job description, and so you want to be able to spend 75% of your day living that, that purpose statement out. And you are my friend. I love to create. It's a lot of fun. And it gives you possible industries based on your results. And look at this. It's got education and motivational speaking and writing. It's got everything I'm doing, Ken. So I feel like I'm in my sweet spot. We well, just you confirmed are. it. You are. And not only are you in your sweet spot, you look fantastic in your little bomber jacket. It's you a got little there. bomber. Well, I it is. You're a little guy. It, to be fair, it is an extra small. You wouldn't want to wear a big bomber jacket. That's true. Yeah. Well, uh, before we can digs me any further, I'm going to mention <laughs> that you can go get that uh, get clear assessment for just ten bucks at RamseySolutions.com. Hurry up, it won't last long. So thank you, Ken. Well, Congrats. actually, it'll last forever. You know why? It's a digital. We never run out. That's true. Well, unless the internet dies. And by the way, you don't have to pay shipping or handling. You know why? It's you, digital. It's digital. Thank you for the for my mom listening. She'll be like, oh, that's helpful, Ken. Thank yeah, you. Well, well, that's yeah. great. That's, that's my demographic. She's always listening. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's go to the phones. If you've got questions about how to advance in your career, switch careers, side hustles, increase that income, Ken is here for you, and I can help jump in on those money questions. The number is 888-825-5225. Andrew is jumping in next in Cincinnati, Ohio. Andrew, welcome to the show. Oh, hello. Hey. Hey. How you doing? Oh, this is awesome. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Loud well, and clear, awesome. Andrew. You're live on the Ramsey Show. How can we help? Oh, dude, sweet. Anyway, so this is a, kind of a student loan question. There's layers to this, so if I, you, if you ask me questions, if you feel like I need to clarify them. Great. So, um, in the end, I own a, owe about $39,000 in student loans. Um, so, 12000 of that is to my parents, and then there's about three or like four or five of them that are just federal student loans. Um, my my father decided it was like a parent plus loan, and he decided that he wanted to pay off the loan um, about two or three years ago. And now he um, I'm in a situation with work when I'm earning a lot more money than I used to, and I'm going to be able to pay off these loans a lot faster. And then with on top of Biden doing the ten thousand dollars, you know, and if Biden's going to go ahead and oop me, I'll take it to the basket. You know what I'm saying? So I am. Um, I'm <laughs> that was a sports well, reference. Uh, okay. I, yeah, we just went to Sports Center there. I want to address that in a minute, but keep sure. going. What's your question? So the question is: is so my dad went went ahead and paid off that student loan, and now that I'm in the situation of work when I'm making a lot more money. Um, he he was telling me that he he wants that money back, right? Rightfully so. And so I'm stuck in between this. Should I go ahead and do the um, the baby steps for the student loans, or should I go ahead and pay off my dad first, which is the biggest loan, and get rid of that slave master relationship? Hmm. That's interesting. So you're saying, hey, should I do the debt snowball as is, even though the twelve thousand is at the very end of it? But dad's hanging over my neck going, hey, I want this money back. How much does he need this exactly. money versus it just being a moral, hey, I paid this off, but it was for you. I'd like the money back. Is he in a tough financial spot? No, he's he's not. He, honestly, he's he's told me that, dude, it could be like two, three, four years. Like, it's fine. Oh. Um, so he's, but, this is but, not like every time I, he's on the phone, he's like, hey, where's my loan money at? No, 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 no. Nothing okay. like that. But – the, then this goes back to the work part of things is that I'm in this situation where I'm able to pay off a lot more money within the next like 18 weeks, but the money's not going to last forever. So it's either pay off the federal loans and just like 
Then yeah, just do the dad snowball. Just smallest to largest, and you'll get there a lot faster. And then when you get to the end, time to pay dad back, and you're done with this whole thing within what, a year? Well, so, no. So, like I said, this is where things get a little confusing. Is that I, so I'm a respiratory therapist. Shout out respiratory therapist. Um, and because of um, COVID and all that stuff, they're really desperate for nurses and respiratory therapists and doctors and all healthcare world. Um, and so they're paying me an extra about $60 an hour, which would be about $90 an hour, um, which makes a lot of disposable income after this. Um, but after all this is done and they're like, all right, gravy trains over, get off, you know, like I only have about three, $400 left of to go towards debt. And that's what I'm saying. That's $14,000 is it's going to be there for a long time. So how long will it take to pay off your debt making this extra money you're making right now? 39000 How quickly um, can you pay that off? Making this kind of it, it, If you're if intense. I, so, uh, let's see. So I'll be honest. I haven't really looked at the, yeah, uh, the yeah. Whole, can I Can I jump whole, in? Hey, listen, bro. Let me, let me help you out. Course. There's nothing confusing about what you threw at us. Nothing. I kept waiting for the confusing part. The only thing that's confused is layered. It's, a, it's not layers. You'd use the debt snowball. Make an and, extra income and if right there's now. There's a season in your in your work life where you, you you got a boon of income, meaning it's 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 kind of booming for a while. Yes, you attack it faster, right? But it's not like as a respiratory therapist, you're not going to have an opportunity to make more money elsewhere. Um, and, and, and you're acting like, you know, the income's going to go away and you'll never be able to get a raise or move up. I mean, you're thinking too hard. You, you stop. You just work the snowball, work the debt snowball, smallest to largest, intense, second job, third job, whatever you got to do, gazelle intense, whatever that looks like for you, to pay every loan back, including your debt. And honestly, you'll get there, I think, a lot quicker than you realize. This is not an insurmountable amount of debt, and you can do this. It's not going to be there forever. And, and, and you just have to stop thinking so much and get busy. How much money do you have in the bank right now, Andrew? Um, we're going on about, about 7,000. Okay. We're taking six of that to throw at this debt. We're going to take this amazing income you have to clean up the rest. We're paying dad back. And all of a sudden, 12 months from now, no yes. excuses. You're completely debt free with a fully funded emergency fund. It's that simple. No layers, George. This was not that, this was not a tiramisu, Ken. It was oh. not that complicated. Not that many layers. Andrew, layer we're cheering dip. for you, man. Just don't overthink it. You got this. One thing at a time, focus intensity, and you'll be dead free in no time. This is The Ramsey Show. George Camel, he's Ken Coleman. This is the Ramsey Show. You can give us a call at 888 825 5225. Brian is joining us from Houston, Texas. Brian, welcome to the show. All right. Thank you guys for having me. Absolutely. What's going on? All right. So um, I'm 27 years old. My wife is 25. And we have a three week old at home. And um, my Basically, my question is, are we doing Baby Step 4 correctly? Um, we've been on the Ramsey plan for a little over a year now, and this is my current situation. I contribute 6% to my company's 401k, and they match 50% of that. To reach the other 9%, my wife and I are planning on opening up a Roth IRA for each of us. My wife was a teacher for two years and has $9,000 in her teacher retirement account called TRS. We plan on rolling that over to a Roth and paying the taxes. Then, to open up a Roth for me, we have to have $6,000 to start the account. Does it make sense to open up my account before year ends 2022 so we can contribute monthly up to $6,000 in 2023 to meet our 9%? Mm. Well, you wouldn't roll into a Roth and create a tax burden until you're in baby step seven with a paid-for house. 
And so I would roll that to a traditional IRA in order to avoid taxes. Okay. On, on my wife's portion? Yes. And that's just so that we're in control. And you can still invest okay. in that traditional IRA, uh, or you can then open up a new Roth IRA and use future funds towards that. And that wouldn't create a tax burden. Okay. So you would use after-tax dollars. Uh, is she So she's not working outside the home right now? Is she with the three-week-old? Yes. So she's, so she's not teaching anymore. She's going to stay at home with the baby. Okay. And what's your income? Gross. Um, my current is uh, 69000 but with uh, bonuses, the bonuses are pretty generous. It's usually between an extra six and 50000 a year. Six and fifty. Yeah, it's a pretty. I'm in oil and gas, so when it's, oh, nice. when times are good, times are good. Yes, sir. Okay, so the easiest thing to do with that kind of a regular income with bonuses, just invest 15 percent of your income of whatever it is that month, and so you can do that. You said six percent okay. uh, is what you're doing now, and they match 50 percent. Is it up to a certain amount they match, or do they match all the way? Um, so that uh, up to that six percent. So they put in. I guess three percent of my income, you could say. Okay, so that six percent gets you up to the match. Then you could fully fund a Roth IRA. Correct. That's another six thousand. Okay. And then does she have earned income at that point? No, no, she's she's staying at home. Okay, so you could go back yeah, to the four hundred one k. As well as okay. funding a traditional or a Roth. So you would open up a new Roth for her at that point. We just don't want to roll the traditional plan she had into a Roth because that is when the tax burden would hit. It will just be taxable income. So I would open up a new I Roth see, for her. I see what you're saying. What's that? Sorry, I said I see what you're saying. So the nine just to a traditional and then open up a new Roth for her. Exactly. And you should have a 6000 limit we'll on that for the year. Okay, and would we open up a Roth for me? Yes. And then if there's still, you haven't hit 15%, you can go back to that 401k and finish it out there. Okay, I see. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I was I was curious because I, I, I figured I was like, well, I should probably open it up for me this year at that 6000 so that I can contribute to it next year. Because if I start it, at least this is what my financial – I, I talked to um, one of the SmartVestor pros. And he said, well, if you start it at the 6000 in January, you can't contribute to it all year. Oh, I see. Because you already entered in the max amount. Yeah. It might be something you have to just start later on then if you can't do it retroactively. Right. So yeah, I think you've got it down, man. You guys are doing great. And congrats on the three-week-old. That's exciting. Yeah. yeah. Get some sleep. I'm surprised you're this we're sharp trying. with a three week old. Yeah, I think you're extremely coherent, my friend. That's uh that's a tough season. I'm impressed. Yeah. But I love oh. it. Oh, I think I, I cut him off well, there. No, George, that's I'm sorry. Nice. Brian, are you still with us? Did I cut you off, buddy? Yeah. No, I'm sorry. I was saying I'm married to an amazing woman who who married a nerd, so I wanted to hear that. He married an amazing woman who married a nerd. But you know what? Could say we the same nerds. about you and we your need, situation, my you, situation. Ken. You know, both of our wives have horrible judgment, and That's thus true. we are married. Fooled them. Yeah, we did. I love it. Yeah. All right, we're going to the great city of Scranton, Pennsylvania, up next <laughs> with our friend John. John, what's going on? Hi, George and Ken. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, I have... I sold my silver route of 3500 that was paid off, and then I paid in cash for a PETA bill, and I want to know if it's okay while I'm baby step two to save up a repair fund for the PETA bill of fifty grand. Why do you need fifty grand for that? The uh, PETA bill is new to me. It has 835,000 miles, and Caterpillar, the engine, recommends a engine overhaul at a million miles. Ouch. Engine overhaul, according to Peter Bill, costs uh, thirty-two thousand dollars. So, is this rig? Is this for your business? Yep, just started it. Okay, and it's paid for. Yes. But you now have a fifty thousand dollar repair on this thing. Uh potentially. Right now, it runs fine, but uh, adding another hundred and fifty thousand miles to it's probably going to happen in four or five months. Okay, and how much debt do you have? I have seventy-two thousand. And what is that? Uh, 
68000 on solar panels oh. and then 4000 remaining on a personal loan that I'm almost done with. Okay, what's the business? Uh, I haul water. And you sold the, the, the Chevy Silverado to buy the Peterbilt to haul the water? Yes. And you were hauling it in the Silverado before? No, I I'm I was working for a different uh, uh, a different company hauling it in a Kenworth for another person, and I decided to go owner operator. So I sold my paid in full Silverado. Do you have another car for them. personal use? Yes, and that's paid for as well. How much water are we dragging around? A hundred and thirty barrels. Have you made money with this business yet? Is it profitable? Uh. I start on the 17th. Okay. And it's just you or do you have a team? It's just me right now. Okay. And your first gig is on the 17th? Yes. Is there I, another way? I, sorry for the simplistic question, but it, I'm going somewhere with this. Is there another way to drag the water around than, than the old truck? And I mean uh, like a wagon good. or something. Forgive me, but is there something like you have a trailer that's a whole lot less money and doesn't have all the mechanical issues? Uh, yeah, thanks for the question. Uh, the frack companies take at a minimum 110 barrels at a time. I, so I didn't that ask that. Being over is 70, there a, is there over a 70,000 pounds? So no, a Silverado or something smaller cannot do it. Okay. You can't pull it in a trailer. No, no, it's uh, way overweight. For oh, okay, I got you. All right, forgive me. I, I don't know anything about that stuff at all. It's all right. Okay, so your, your question is, Cash flowing this during baby step two. Yeah, saving it up for a repair fund. Pops. He's, I mean, he's asking, possible. should he guaranteed. save up the emergency fund? Yeah, and this which... would be like saving reserves for your business at that point. Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. so if, the, if this is an emergency where the truck won't run right now, then yes, and you yeah. know it's going to happen. But I would get some clarity on when it's going to happen and how much that's going to cost and then c- kind of create that sinking fund. And if that's 10000 20000 a month, I don't know how much this business is going to bring in. Do you have any idea? I should have the fifty grand in uh, within ten weeks. Oh, wonderful! I tell you what, I'd also be looking to find the best, most affordable, reputable mechanic that works on these things and get in a second opinion as well. And what can you do along the way, maybe to try to avoid uh, the uh, recommended engine replacement at million miles? I'd, I'd be doing everything I could to save from preventative maintenance as well. Yeah. But yes, I would, you're going to have to stockpile that kind of cash in your reserves for your business on top of then starting to clean up the debt and create your own emergency fund for your personal life. And so that's part of being a small business owner. But uh, I wish you the best with this new business, man. That puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books. My thanks to Ken Coleman, all the folks in the booth, Jenna, Ben, James, Austin, Zach, Andrew, the whole gang, and you, America. Thanks for listening. We'll be back with you before you know it. Hey folks, Ken Coleman here. Did you know The Ramsey Show is one of the most popular podcasts in the world? Get your daily dose of advice on life and money. Check out all of our shows from The Ramsey Network wherever you listen to podcasts. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods, moving, and storage studios, this is The Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life and your money. I'm Ramsey personality George Campbell, joined this hour by my friend Ken Coleman, and we are here for you to take your calls to give you some hope in all kinds of areas of life. Maybe it's money, maybe it's your career, a toxic work situation, a bad debt situation. We want to help. The number to call is 888-825-5225. John kicks us off in Pensacola. John, welcome to the show. Uh, Hey, how are y'all doing? We are doing great. What's going on with you? Uh, Well, I was working for uh, a previous employer uh, for approximately four to five months. They gave me a pretty good um, starting, starting bonus package. And uh, I worked there for a while, but it wasn't a great work environment. I didn't really enjoy it, and I thought I'd be better at my previous job. So I decided to leave. I understood I was going to have to pay back my starting uh, package, which I, you know, I was 
more than willing to do, but they've kind of tacked on a whole lot of other fees, which, which I feel are really absor- exorbitant. And now I'm kind of stuck paying back my previous employer with way more than what they gave me in the starting bonus package. Was this all in writing, what you would have to pay back? Uh, I did have to sign a contract saying that I would have to pay back, uh, you know, some of the moving fees and stuff like that at the very beginning. But it was way, way, way more than what I thought it was going to be. Okay, but what I'm getting at is, is, is it laid out very clearly in that agreement to where what they're asking you to pay back is Mm -hmm. clearly by the letter of the agreement, okay, not included? Or is it just it's included, uh, but you just thought it would be less money? That's what I'm trying to get to. I got gotcha. you. In the original agreement, it really just kind of says that you're going to pay back the money that we gave you plus the moving expenses and uh, things of that nature. It doesn't really give out a, a outlined amount or anything like that. Okay, so, so the expenses that they are now wanting you to pay back, they fall within the categories written very clearly in the agreement. Uh, I would say yes, but they're they're way way more. They're like almost twice as much. Than okay, is it listed people. out? So you have receipts of what you actually. So my point is, you have financial records to be able to dispute that what they're asking is more than they actually paid you. Um, yeah, kind of. So I guess I put it this way: like, so uh, they gave me a starting bonus. I'll, I'll give you the numbers if you don't mind. Sure. Yeah, they gave me a starting bonus of like sixteen thousand dollars. I was like, okay, cool. And they moved me from North Alabama down to Florida, where I am now. Um, and, you know, I left the company, like I said, after about five months. And now they're trying to say I can pay them back $34,000. And I was, you know, kind of flabbergasted at that number. I thought I was going to pay back maybe sixteen plus moving costs of like maybe maybe $20,000 altogether. But they're talking about $35,000. What was the signing uh, bonus? Uh, sixteen. So, yeah, that, yeah, sixteen k. And then the relocation costs? The relocation cost is what I think is a kind of kind of crazy there because I'm looking at the, the numbers now. They're saying that it cost um, about seven thousand dollars to move from from North Alabama down to Florida, in Pensacola, Florida, which is not even down to the Panhandle near Miami. It's close to uh, you know it's close to Alabama. Yes. So did they pay you seven thousand dollars? Did that end up in your bank account? No, sir. That was just how much they say it cost to move that far. Well, so they I, so they paid it directly with the moving company. Correct. I uh having moved, you know, from Georgia to Tennessee, I don't That doesn't sound crazy. It doesn't sound like it's off much. Um but again, you need to be asking for receipts. So the know? 16 and the signing bonus, the 7 and relocation, where's the rest of this 34 coming from? Yeah, and the rest they, they got I'm looking at the the thing here. They they uh they had me in temporary lodging for a little while before I found a, an, an apartment down here. Okay. And they're saying that, that uh, the temporary lodging was $5,000 for just one month. And and uh, let me see here. I mean, that sounds it, fair for temporary, if that's, you know, yeah, I'm doing the math. Corporate rents or corporate lodging is more expensive than a traditional rent. Yeah. But that's I 166 bucks a night. Okay. I just stayed in the basic hotel, you know. So I was just. Yeah, I mean, you got to ask them. You got to ask them to to show you all the receipts of this stuff if they will. I mean, if you're going to dispute it, you you, you got to have some facts. I got gotcha. you. And yeah, it, what was the agreement? Was if you stayed a certain amount of time, you don't have to pay it back? Exactly, and it was like I want to say uh, two years or one. I can't remember if it's one or two years, but it's one over two years. Mm. Yeah, it sounds like. There, you didn't do your due diligence and homework and reading all the fine print and figuring it out. And they're covering all these expenses, and it's not up to you to do the research and make sure that it's affordable. You were just kind of like, all right, they're covering the costs. Um, but at the same time, you sign an agreement saying if you leave under those two years, you owe us all the money back. Yeah. And so it stinks. It, I would put this under – I would file it under stupid tax. And it may be one of those money mistakes where you go, man, that sucked. I have to pay that back. I mean, you can try to fight it and do civil lawsuit. I just don't think you have much of a much ground to stand on if they've got all their receipts, which I assume they do. I yeah, I gotcha. I I actually did hire uh, a a lawyer to see if they can kind of dispute this for like a thousand dollar retainer, and and he's kind of helped me out here. Uh, But you know, I don't know if I can get the amount much lower. You might be able to to settle with him and, and pay a smaller amount. That's yeah, probably best case scenario. Yeah, because I'm willing to pay the, of course, the 16 and and something else, of course, on top of that. But I just didn't want to pay the full 30, 34. 
uh, to be honest with you. Well, so I, I agree with George. I would propose a settlement, you know, but uh, based on the numbers that you've given us so far, it doesn't sound like you're getting gouged. It sounds here. like they're 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 listing out every single expense, and they probably have yeah. receipts because they're a legitimate company. And so at that point, there's not much to fight. Mm, yeah, I guess you, you guys are. All yeah, right. I mean it sucks. I'm not trying to belittle that. This really is not a fun situation, um, and I'm rooting for John. But at this point, it's one of those. Dang it! Should have read that fine print. Should have asked more questions. Should have asked them where they're lodging me because. I don't know if this is going to work out over yeah, the next. But two it years. sounds like to me they gave you a detailed printout. Or they gave you a detailed layout of the thirty-four thousand. It all equals up to thirty-four thousand. Correct. That's correct. I'm looking at it now. Yep. Man, I, I mean that's what I'd be asking for, and you got it. So you know, uh, unless you can somehow prove that they're price gouging, it kind of feels like a medical said. bill where like you don't know what the procedure is costing and what insurance, is, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, yeah, I have a thirty-four thousand dollar medical bill. Yeah, that's about what it, it feels like too. And that's that's kind of what I'm looking at too because I've personally moved across the country before, and and it cost me twenty five hundred dollars with all my stuff to move. Well, that's way John doing it John's it. way with John's research and John choosing <laughs> the company. This yeah, is a company true. who is flush with cash going. That's we're probably gonna... also some movers that are wearing weight belts instead of proper back support. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you man. know, like they, they rented a truck that's not, I mean, 2500 to move across country, that might have been 30 years ago. Oh, yeah. Boy, oh, boy, it's man. expensive to move these days. John, that stinks. And for those listening who are entering into a situation like that, do your due diligence and think about what if this doesn't go to plan? Maybe I should have this money set aside until those two years are over in case this thing goes south. And uh, that just puts you in a better financial spot than where we find our friend John. By the way, that's why you should also be using Pods Moving and Storage. Great call. Our you friends know? at Pods. They're, they're not going to cost you an arm and a leg. They're not going to do you dirty. They're going to take... <laughs> that's a saying, Ken. <laughs> is it? i got to teach Ken some lingo. I haven't the heard kids that are one. I'm sorry. Hey, more of that lingo coming up right here on The Ramsey Show. <laughs> Folks, the stock market has been rough lately, and if you've been watching your investments take a hit, it sucks. I get it. But if you're freaking out, don't. Market dips don't mean you have to retire broke. You've got to keep a long-term perspective, and remember that investing is a marathon, not a sprint. So look at the facts. If you invest $120 a month from age 25 to 65, you could have over a million dollars for retirement. No, it's not too good to be true. That's based on the long-term average return of the S&P 500, which is the top 500 American companies. Now, if you're not 25, you're a little older than that, that's okay. It's not too late. You got to get started, though. No matter what age you start investing, you'll be happy you did when it's time to retire. In fact, a huge predictor of investing success is that you actually invest. Shocker, I know. And you keep investing consistently. So get a pro in your corner to help you get started. To find one who can help you invest with confidence, just go to RamseySolutions.com slash SmartVestor, and we'll connect you with SmartVestor pros in your area who can help you make a plan for your goals and guide you through the ups and downs of the market. Again, RamseySolutions.com slash SmartVestor. Jack joins us up next in Montana. Jack, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. What's going on? Yeah, taking my call. Well, I inherited $95,000, um, 58 years old. Um, my wife is 63. Um, we bought a house, um, and uh, I want to get it paid off. Um, we owe, we bought it for 280. Um, we owe 195. Um, we have $36,595 and 60 cents in the bank. That's not towards any bills. We have no credit card debt. We haven't had any debt years. Um, I, I'll go back to my story on, so you get a little, just 17 years ago, or actually 20 years ago, I got divorced, had $50,000 in debt, um, focused on that. And now I'm sitting with the money in the bank, 
$280,000 in a 401k. Um, and I, the only debt I have is the 195,000 on the house. Cool. My question is, is, is I would like to take that $95,000 and just put it down on my house. And that gets me down to a hundred thousand with what we've been doing. Our house will be paid off in five years. Um, without a doubt. Um, I got other people saying, no, don't do that because I'll have to pay $12,000 in taxes if I take that money out. For income taxes. If you take They're what saying, money? No, take that the in, if you take the inherited if, money if out? I, inherited, yeah. If I take that inherited inherited money, I'm going to have to pay income tax on that inherited money. Okay. Um, which is r- roughly about twelve thousand dollars. Is what I'm figuring. Um, other people are saying, and I talked to a financial advisor. I can invest it on a 13, 13 month CD or whatever at like four nope. percent interest. Well, of course, a financial and, advisor but, is going to want you to invest it instead of paying your house down. So that's not yeah. a, re- a reputable source in that regard. I'm paying the taxes on it and putting it on the house. And it puts you okay. closer that's- to what, 112 on the mortgage? Yeah. Yeah. And let's still yeah, make well, it a goal to pay it off in five years. And that money in the right. bank that you have, is that your emergency fund with a little more? Yeah. Yep, a little more. And and we drive – that's the other thing is we drive old cars. I haven't bought a car. Um, we can't go out of town. We don't go out of town much. If I do go on a trip, I just rent a car. I figure it's smarter than having that payment every month if you borrowed money. I could take the 36000 and we thought about this because my wife is 63. Like I said, I'm 58. With the car prices today, we do need – a new car, so when we retire, we will have a vehicle. And we thought about taking twenty thousand dollars of that thirty six thousand dollars and buying a car that we can rely on. What's your household um, because, income? Uh, what is it? Uh, I got it written down here. Um, ninety five thousand. Okay, great. My wife well, is retired. That's ninety five thousand. Before I put fifteen percent in a four hundred one k, we put two hundred fifty dollars in a savings. You know, we keep adding to that money. Okay. Um, so, I would, I would you know, separate you your emergency fund. So separate your emergency okay. fund, have your three to six months, and then have a different savings account for your car upgrade and buy a reasonable used car with cash. And I'm paying this house down. And I'm going to make that a goal because it's going to be hard to retire with a mortgage hanging over your head. And you got 280 right. in your 401k. You're going to need more than that to live on. And so at least without a house payment, you can limit your expenses. And so you have you don't right. need much to live on in retirement. So that's that's what I would do if I was in your shoes. And I would ignore those other people because other people are broke and everyone's got an opinion. But this is your money and your life. And having no mortgage payment changes everything. So appreciate the call. All right. Up next, we are going to Charlotte, North Carolina. Brandon joins us there. Brandon, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Sure. What's going on? Uh, yeah, so I just we just moved to North Carolina, actually, and we are in the process of trying to figure out what auto insurance to use, and I'm just not super familiar. Should we do full coverage, uh, liability? Obviously, there's tons even in within that, so I would love just to hear some of your thoughts on auto coverage. Yeah, I mean, you definitely want liability. You're going to want comprehensive, and you're going to want collision. And uninsured motorists is very important, too. That one can tank some people. Hmm. And a really yeah, easy way to do this. Your, what's that? I said I worked with one of your um, ELPs, and they had just kind of given me two quotes, one with full coverage and one with limited liability. And I was like, hmm, I don't know which one to pick. So. Yeah, I mean, I would go with the full coverage because these situations okay. can put people in a real pickle when they are underinsured. And I've been there. Uh, this was about, I don't know, eight, nine years ago, I got in a car wreck and I didn't have great coverage. I was still on my parents' insurance and I was underinsured and we ended up getting sued. And uh, luckily I didn't have to pay anything out of pocket, but this was three years of nightmares hanging over my head going, am I going to have to you know, go out of pocket for this? And she ended up getting 50 grand between the two insurance companies, her own and mine. And so that was a scary moment. And from then on, I made sure that I had uh, as much coverage as I could get. That made sense for me. So did they walk you through the options of what it looks like Um, to have full coverage versus limited liability? Not really. He just kind of sent the two. I mean, it's broken down in terms of what it covers and how much and those kinds of things. But we never really talked about it. He just sent it over. So I wasn't sure because I was like, man, we drive to 
hoopties, if you will. And, um, well, my wife's car is less of a hoopties, but yeah. it's like the cars aren't worth that much. So it's really about just other people's medicals then. Versus replacing your car. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, when you have limited liability collision and comprehensive, that's what full coverage is. And I would recommend all okay. three. So if you can swing okay. it, can you can you cover the expense? What's the difference between them? Yeah. Uh, we're talking like 117 versus like 71. So it's not like a huge difference. We're just, we're really getting up in the pace of going, like both of us getting on the same page and feeling like, I don't know, it just was like a small thing that I was just like, ah, but that's like an extra 40 bucks. I can go somewhere kind of thing. Yeah. Well, in in this process, we're in a, we're starting, uh, starting a company, uh, we're starting business. And so that's been fun. And, but you know, there's just expenses there. So I feel like we're cutting in all these spots. So I just wouldn't cut sure there. Just, you don't want to cut there. 40, I'd rather 40 bucks cut a difference. subscription than yeah. cutting into my uh, yeah. insurance. That's right. So if you can get a good yeah. rate on that's full right. coverage, I'm going for it. And that sounds very reasonable. Sweet. Okay. So, and you can get a, a second opinion on that, but I've got full coverage and I sleep better at night and that's worth the extra, you know, 20, 30 bucks. And you don't sleep well as it is. I have terrible sleep issues. But one thing I don't worry about is insurance. And there are so many types of insurance, Ken. I know you, your brain just melts a little bit having it to does. talk about insurance for oh, too long. here we go. Hit well, people with the types of crazy insurance, George. You love this. And actually, I love it, too, because it's quite entertaining. It's like a, it could have been a top ten list on Letterman. Yeah, we covered this. What do we I, got? I did a TikTok on this, Ken. There was something about aliens? There was alien abduction insurance. Alien abduction insurance. My, my personal favorite. My favorite is the, the, the pet rapture insur- insurance, where atheists will take care of your pets if you die and you're a Christian, and you get raptured. The atheist said, hey, for the low price of 10 bucks a month... I'll make sure Fido's covered. See, I'm going to tell you, it's this kind of crap that makes Christians look look bad. That's true. That's just ridiculous. Well, Ken, I did a five-day video series that's completely free to help folks get more confidence in their coverage. You can go sign up for that at RamseySolutions.com slash confidence. You'll get an email every day with a quick three-minute video. And by the end, you're going to be a pro. Even Ken can do this stuff. Oh, thanks to you. Yeah. I'm here for you, Ken. And don't buy alien abduction insurance. No, we don't recommend it. If that goes down, we got bigger problems. (laughs) All right. More of your calls coming up on The Ramsey Show. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ramsey personality George Campbell, Ken Coleman, co-hosting today. This is your show, America. Give us a call, 888 825 Laura joins us up next in Knoxville, Tennessee. Laura, welcome to the show. Hi, guys. Thanks for talking to me. Absolutely. How can we help today? Um, so uh, my husband passed away um, in December of mm. last year. Um, I took a little bit of time off mm. from work. Thank you. Um, I took a little time off from work um, after that, um, and I returned to work, but at reduced hours. So where I had been working a regular 40-hour week, I'm now working a 32-hour week. So, of course, my annual salary is adjusted um, yeah. for that. Um, and I'm just curious if that's something that I can afford to do long-term. Um, you know, planning for the future now is, is quite a bit different than it was mm. this time last year. So um, I'm a little stumped on, on how to proceed from here. Sure. Well, we can walk through some of these numbers and give you some peace about mm-hmm. that. But I just want to say I'm so sorry okay. Yes. for the, your well, loss. You. How, how old was he? Uh, he was 47 oh, and I'm 41. Goodness. Oh, my goodness. Much too yeah. young. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Well, let's walk through some of these numbers. So what are you making right now with that okay. 32 hours a week? Uh, right now, I'm at 51000 per year. You said 61 or 51? 51. Okay. And is that enough to cover your bills? Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. So you have some margins. I'm, I'm pretty frugal. So <laughs> That's good. Do you have any debt? Uh, I have a car, um, 
car loan that I owe about 8500 on that's going to be paid off this month. Oh, Great. good. Okay, and that's it for debt? And that's it, nothing else. How much do you have in the bank? Liquid cash. Um, I've got a, I've got about 45000 in retirement, 403B. Um, I've got 35000 in a mutual fund. Um, I've got about 40000 in a savings account, and I'm working on selling about uh, somewhere between seventy five and a hundred thousand dollars worth of assets, wow. gold, and wow. some things like that. Yeah, and is that mutual fund? Is that just in a taxable brokerage account? It's non retirement. Correct, non okay. retirement account. What would you think about cashing that out? Um, I don't know. I only recently opened it. Okay. Um, so I don't know how it's performing or anything just yet. I, I think I've had it open for maybe three months. Okay. And then, George, let me just ask a quick question here. The margin uh, on your 32 hours, when you get paid, uh, mm-hmm. how much margin do you have? I know you're frugal. Uh, how much do you have left over after all the bills? Uh, well, I automatically will put half of my paycheck in the savings account, and half of it covers – everything that I that I need to pay plus some. I usually add a little extra. Okay, so that's what I thought. And the reason that I asked that is really to address your initial question, which is, you know, how long can you afford to keep working 32 hours a week if I understood you correctly? Yeah. Uh, And the answer is you can afford to do it now. You're comfortable. My goodness. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, you get 40,000 in savings. I know what George is going to tell you about paying off that car today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's sort of the plan. Um, I've been, as I've been selling things, that that savings account jumped up really, really quickly. I, I think um, you can afford to so, work thirty-two hours a week as long as you choose to. Okay. You're not. Okay, you're good. not that's silly. Good. You're in great financial position, wouldn't you say, George? Oh yeah. I, now I, you're, you yeah. said you're forty-one. Yes. Okay, so we've got an investment calculator over at RamseySolutions.com. I want you to play with mm-hmm. that and then get in touch with a SmartVestor Pro to help you create a retirement goal. Because crunching the numbers here, you're 41. At 61, you said you have 45000 in retirement. Mm-hmm. And let's say we were able to add, you think you could add $800 a month to that? Oh, easily, yeah. Okay, so at a 9% return over that 20 years, it'll become 800000 Now, my goal for you would be to have over a million. So that you can retire okay. fairly comfortably with ne- without a house payment. Do you have a mortgage right now? No, house is paid for. Wow, what's that worth? That, that's awesome. Um, in this market, it's probably worth about two seventy five. Okay. Yeah, you're in great, great shape. So if you've got no payments in the world after you pay off this car today, which I'm so excited for you to do as soon as you yeah. get off the phone, Laura, mm. right? Yes, okay. We should, wait, yeah. I want to wait should another do. day. I'll go ahead. You know what we should do? We should do it sometime. We right. phone in Right now. The we lender. do another line. We call the lender right now, and you pay it over the phone, and we celebrate. That but we couldn't do that because we wouldn't want to reveal her her her, her bank account info. That but that would true. be fun. That's true. It would be fun to pay it off on the air. So, James, we got to figure out how to do that sometime. Yeah, he's on it. He's, on it. he's working on it. So, yeah. Laura, if you did, let's say, 900 a month, and you work till mm-hmm. 63, you would have over a million. And that's with a 9% return, uh, which is reasonable. And so I have a lot of faith that you can retire with a lot of dignity, especially because you don't have a house payment. Without question. And your income is only going to go up over 20 years, right? Yeah. Even if you remain right. at 32 yeah. hours. And so you're in great shape, and you've got 35 in the mutual fund. You're going to sell off these assets. Uh, you can invest that money once you sell those assets as well, since you already have a paid-for house. Your next goal is just to continue to build wealth, be generous, and also spend some money and enjoy your life. I know you're frugal, which tells me you probably don't have a lot of, quote, fun. No, I do. What do you do, do for fun that costs money? That costs money? Um, I have a, a travel buddy that she and I take um, – Long weekend trips, and we go to concerts, and we do things like that. That's nice. When's the last time you did that? Um, A couple of months ago. Okay, awesome. Look at George trying to spend your money, Laura. I'm trying to have some fun. (laughs) I got your back over here. I'm not going to let him get crazy with your money. Well, I'm I'm excited for the future, Laura. I know the the past has been dark for you, but I'm hoping for brighter things ahead and a a great retirement. So thank you you. so much for the call. Proud of her. Yeah. I mean, now let's just – I want to pause here and just point out that Laura – Having financial peace to the level that she does certainly helps 
when you when you when you lose a spouse. Oh yeah, that's that is so devastating. It's hard enough on its own, but then to add on to that financial stress of right. how am I going to pay the bills? Yeah, she's going to be fine, and and uh, I love that she's traveling and 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 getting back out there and doing life. And wow, tough stuff. Yeah. Forty five. It's heavy. Mm. Too soon. All right, we're going to take a quick one from Amanda here. Amanda, get straight to your question. How can we help today? Yeah, so my husband and I are coming into about $20,000 here in the next few days, and um, we're just wondering how to best apply it to our baby steps. We've, we're on baby step two, but we've had some recent vehicle trouble, and so we're not sure exactly what we need to do. Are the vehicles in the shop? Well, they're not in the shop. They're, so <laughs> we have the vehicle situation actually under control right now, but there's one that still needs a little bit of work. Um but they're both very much hoopties. Um, one's a 2008 Dodge Caravan. The other one's a 2001 Lexus RX 300. Okay. And how much debt do you have? We have about 32000 left. What kind of debt is it? It is some student loans, uh, the rest of our timeshare that is, I don't want to talk about it, Oof. and <laughs> um, a little bit on a credit card. Okay. I would continue doing the debt snowball. How much do you guys have in the bank in cash? Um, we have our thousand dollar emergency fund, and um, I mean, I just got paid today, so we have a little bit more than that, I suppose. But um, that's for the monthly bills and stuff. Okay. Well, you can create a sinking fund in your budget for these car repairs, but I would not go out and buy a you know ten thousand dollar car tomorrow because you're worried about what could happen with these cars. So I would create a sinking fund where you say, all right, we're going to put a hundred bucks away every month into uh, a, a savings account to cover this car repair because a year from now we're probably going to have a thousand dollar repair on our hands. Right. And if you do okay. have a repair, pause the debt snowball, cash flow it, work side jobs, whatever you got to do to cash flow it, and then get back on the wagon and continue that debt snowball. But pay them off smallest to largest yeah. with that twenty grand, and uh, don't let it derail you with this kind of car, these car troubles. All right. Well, thank you. Absolutely. Thanks so much for the call. More of your calls coming up. Give us one. 888-825-5225. I'm George Camel. He's Ken Coleman. This is The Ramsey Show. scripture of the day comes from 1 Timothy 1.5. The aim of our charge is love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. Abraham Lincoln said, perhaps a man's character is like a tree and his reputation like its shadow. The shadow is what we think of it. The tree is the real thing. I'm George Campbell, joined by Ken Coleman this hour. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Jane joins us up next in Houston, Texas. Jane, welcome to the show. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. How can Ken and I help? So a couple months ago, my husband's car was stolen from out front of our house in oh. central Houston. Wow. Um, it's a real bummer because car prices have gone up significantly since we bought the car. Um Luckily, he uh, was really diligent in finding comps, and so insurance paid us properly, in my opinion. Good. Um, given that, we had a $10,000 note on the car at the time it was stolen, and so now we've taken away 26000 from insurance. Um, the loan's paid off, and we have 26000 sitting in the bank. Um, we can't buy the same car with that 26000 I don't really want to take on more debt. Um, 
currently we're a one car family and it's kind of weighing on us. We both work really long hours, but different schedules kind of, I mean, really the same schedule, but we both just depending on our days at work have different hours. Basically. Um, I might have to work till eight o'clock at night. He will get done at six thirty, or vice versa, just depending on, um, the day. So it's, been a lot of uber a lot of ubering um basically my question is do we just buy a junker hold on jane the difference from a junker to a thirty thousand dollar car is very large there's a spectrum there yeah why not buy a twenty thousand dollar car is that a junker to you well, I guess I don't know. I don't really know what we could find for twenty thousand dollars. Their answer is no. A, replacement. a yeah. twenty thousand dollar car is how? What's your income? Um, combined, we make about three ten. Okay, and oh so for y'all, gosh. a twenty thousand dollar car is a junker because right. you make that much money. I am on. Uh, well, and I feel bad because I have a really nice car, so, so I would feel bad. Where is your me. money going, Jane? That you can't afford to cash flow a thirty thousand dollar car. Um, well, we can afford a $30,000 car, but we can't afford, I guess, like we couldn't afford to replace him, his car with the Tahoe that he had before. Yeah, but we're not doing that. Um, we're not doing that. We're what George is saying is, I mean, but I, I, I okay, first of all, you got to go to basic car website, Facebook marketplace, and just look in your area. Uh, in a budget range of twenty, just through twenty in or fifteen thousand. I mean, depending on what your financial goals are. But do you guys a have a lot of debt, Jane? Is... We do. We have student loans. Yeah. Okay. How, How much? much? Uh, about ninety-seven thousand. Yeah, but look at a ten thousand dollar car, a fifteen. If you're trying to cut back and use some of that cash to go to the student loans, but you gotta have. So a that, car. I guess that's what I was asking: is should we buy like a ten thousand dollar car and put the rest of it towards the student loans, yes. or should we? I love that plan. Yes, because that car is not your forever car. That might be a one year car, yeah. and you sell it and you upgrade once you're completely debt free with an emergency fund, and you can easily cash flow a thirty five thousand dollar car making three ten. Once you have no debt, right? Yeah. That's, well, we, we could save up for one at least. Why don't you go on, uh, again, go online and just search cars between seven and 10,000 and just see what's out there. You don't even know. Trust me, I know. The reason I know is I got a, I got a kid who needs a car, all right, uh, yeah. a teenager. And so I've been looking. I'm looking all the time. You'd be surprised what you can get that's highly functional. George, you um, pulled like up a sedan style? Yeah. That- I'm, I'm pulling up just Tahoes and seeing in my area what I can get for $20,000, okay. for example. But we're not doing 20, George. We've already got her down to 10. Well, even down to 15, you can get a 2013 Tahoe. So yeah. I think the problem is expectations versus yeah. reality. You so just the- don't know. And that's not being negative. You just haven't looked. You got to look. But you guys had a brand new Tahoe pretty much. What was the year on it? It was a 2016. Okay. So 2016 going down to a 2013 feels like a downgrade, and that's hard emotionally for you guys to process. Yeah, but she's looking at a sedan. I'm telling you. My Uh, thing, Jane, is I think you guys need to take control of your income and go, where's this $310,000 going? Because if we can clean up this debt. We've been cash flowing a different project recently, and so that's kind of where some of it's been going. Okay. And we're, we're able to shift back now to our debts. But we're just trying to figure out what do we do with this pile of cash? Do we buy a car? Or do we stay a one-car family? I think you or need the two like cars. You need half? a car. You spent the first two minutes in distress over the one car. It's not worth it. You guys make $310,000. <laughs> okay. Get a reasonable car for now. Pay That's off right. the debt. Get the emergency fund. And then we can upgrade the car. Yep. Okay. That's simple, it. simple, simple, simple. And yes, it's going to take some swallowing of the pride to go, I don't really love this car. It's okay. It's a car. It gets from A to B without having to do Uber. That's it. Yeah. So, uh, but that stinks about the stolen vehicle. That's a tough situation. That really for sure. is tough. Oof. Glad insurance took care of them. All right. You're Let, the insurance guru. I love insurance. And Lynn's up next in Cincinnati. Lynn, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank you. What's going on with you? So my, yes. So my question is, I have about ten thousand dollars in a life insurance policy. Um, my husband passed away in 2020, oh, and sorry. I have a Parent PLUS loan. Oh, thank you. Um, I have a Parent PLUS loan that I owe uh, $12,000 on. And so my question is, um, and I need a new vehicle, <laughs> but I've decided to wait. I put a little bit of money, like 1500 out of that pen, 
into, um, you know, just getting the car up to par and hoping to get me through two or three years. Should I put the rest of that money down on the Parent PLUS loan? Um, I do have about $1,000 a, a month set aside um, in my budget to put towards the Parent PLUS loan. I just started this whole budget thing with you guys. So, oh, it's um, awesome. Yes. Welcome <laughs> so to the weirdos wondering. who budget. Right. Yes, I'm excited. <laughs> okay, so you're doing the right so, things. Do you have any other debt other than the Parent PLUS loan? Um, my mortgage, which is, you know, 80000 I had to sell my home that we were living in, and I, you know, bought a new home that's something I could afford myself. Okay. So, yeah. So 1500 is I going to... on that house, I put... Yes. That's great. Well, we're going to worry about that later on in what we call Baby Step 6. Yes. And so right now, Baby Step 2, sure. we're paying off the debt, which is the Parent PLUS loan. You said you're going to put 1500 into the repairs mm-hmm. to get the car functional for the next few years. Yes. And then 8500 towards the Parent PLUS loan, which gets it down to 3500 Yes. And then putting 1000 a month, is that on top of the minimum payment? Um, that includes the minimum payment. Okay. So in the yes. next four months, you're completely debt-free if you follow this right. plan. And then you can yes. start building your emergency fund, which is three to six months of expenses. Do you know what that would add right. up to? Um, yes. I think it was about – I added it up once before, and I think it was close to like I don't know, maybe 12000 Perfect. And so that's our next yeah. goal. And that 1000 you were spending on the Parent PLUS loan can now go go towards the emergency fund. And so I would love yeah. for you to have that emergency fund within six months. What's your income? Yeah, that would be great. Um, so I bring home about 1360 every two weeks. Okay. Yeah. Great. And so with that, you know, 2600 a month, we're going to try to limit our expenses as much as we can. If you can do any overtime or I'll work on the side to increase that, I want to get you that financial foundation as soon as possible so that you can begin investing. Are you investing right now? Um, not really. I mean, okay. I work for a school system, and so my retirement is set up through them, and I'm, you know, 52 years old. I, I'm about ready to retire. I can retire now. But because of all that's happened in the last two years, yeah. I'm not retiring yet. Oh, I understand. So, well, we want yeah. to get you to a great so, financial spot. So what I'm going to do is gift you one year of Financial Peace University as well as every dollar, our budgeting tool, because you've already got started on that. And we want to walk with you over the next year as you build that foundation. So sorry for your loss, and we're wishing you the best on this journey. Thanks so much for the call. That puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books. My thanks to my co-host, Mr. Ken Coleman, there and is. all the folks in the booth. We've got Austin and James and Andrew and Zach. The whole gang's in there. And you, America, we Jay. thank you for listening in. We'll be back with you before you know it. Until then, spend wisely, save intentionally, and give generously. Good show. Do you love a good Dave rant? Want to see the latest Ramsey Show videos going viral? Check out your favorite moments from the Ramsey Show on YouTube. Go watch and subscribe to the Ramsey Show channel on YouTube.